Hey everyone and welcome to the second part of the rundown on Functional Store Tools. As we've seen in the last video, this toolkit is packing quite a lot of stuff. We had a look at operator templates, swapping operators, alt selecting, and also the palette search. And this is just scratching the surface, there's a lot more that we can take a look at. If you haven't so far, you can download Functional Store Tools from GitHub for free. Um, but of course, Patreon uh, fellows and any kind of support are always welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can streamline working with custom parameters, internal operators, as well as parent and global shortcuts, and more. First, let's talk about something that I should have talked about in the previous video, and it's authorize and autocomp. Um, so the default behavior right now in Touch Designer is if you uh, append a generator after a, after a top, um, it will be in the mode of combine with input composite and set resolution. In the past, this used to be just set resolution only. And this is something that I was missing um, from the new versions of Touch Designer. Um, so I created a shortcut that is holding Alt while putting down a generator. The generators are the darker purple um, operators that generate us some pixels. And when I hold Alt or Command on Mac, um, this will be by default set to set resolution only. Similarly, if I just want to put down a circle top, I can hold Alt while putting it down. And this will by default, uh, for example, set it to 32 bit float. And the output resolution will be set to parent panel size, which is in the projects, um, in the default uh, project containers case, uh, you know, this width and height. These are also customizable. So if we head into Functional Store Tools and look for auto combine and auto res. These components then uh, define the default behavior of generators when holding Alt. You can set it to any kind of composite operation if we like something by default more than the other. Um, also the pixel format you can set and also in case of noise, the default RGB operation. So if I put down another noise and hold Alt, this will be set to noise already and not input plus noise, which is the default one. So just by holding Alt, we can save ourselves quite some time when we want to add some generators in our network. Next up, we're going to take a look at how we can streamline working with custom components and custom parameters. So we have this scenario, we have this beautiful uh, displays feedback network here. I'm going to collapse it into a component and then I want to expose some of these parameters um, to the parent, which is something that we do a lot usually, and it's a good thing to do um, so that we can keep our network organized and just expose the most useful parameters. So let's say I want to expose this amplitude, and what you would normally do is you would open up the parent, uh, customized parent component, and you would drag the operator here or so. Instead, I've created two ways to do this more easily. We can simply dra drag and drop this parameter onto this button up here. This is a multifunctional button. We will cover a lot of, lot of the functions, but the default one is just drag and, dragging and dropping. And when I click on this, it opens up the parent uh, parameters also. If I right click on it, it also opens up the component editor. So these are the two main basic functions of this button. I can also expose parameters by dragging them onto here in the navigation bar. And with this navigation bar drag method, we can also expose to any part of the hierarchy. So I could also expose it to the project one container above. As you can see, it's there. So this already saves us a lot of time instead of having to open up, you know, this thing and dragging it onto there, um, just dragging the parameter onto this button or up here. You can also drag components onto the button and that will promote all the parameters to the parent. So now if I open this up, I can see that there's a new tab for the bloom and all of these parameters are available there. If I wanted to edit the currently selected component, I can hold shift and left click that opens up a parameter window or holding shift and right clicking and that opens up the component editor. 
for the currently selected component. These are also on hotkeys as Shift Alt W and Shift Alt Q. As well as opening these menus for the parameter, it's Control Alt Q and Control Alt W. Let's see what else this button can do. I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous video, but if I hold Alt and right click on um, on any of the buttons up here, it opens up the wiki in the relevant place. So we can take a look at what else this button can do. Uh, we had a look at that. So middle click. Uh, middle click is kind of something that I'm not using a lot, but if I middle click on this, it will promote every parameter that this parent has to its parent. So it's kind of kind of delegating the custom parameters one level up. For the last function of this button, uh, when alt clicking onto it, let's imagine a scenario that we have another project open opened up or um, we are somewhere else in our network and we want to copy over a component to uh, somewhere else in our project or another project and i'm just going to copy this but as you can see it has all these references um, that will of course be broken when i paste it here and i would have to go and clear these or replace them or something all the time instead if i have this component selected and alt click it will get rid of all those broken expressions and if i had something there that wasn't broken so let's uh let's replace this with uh, apps time dot seconds. Let's say if I hit Alt and click on this, then it will clear only the broken ones. Let's venture into the topic of internal operators, parent shortcuts, and global shortcuts, which this toolkit also has some improvements on. Um, so, internal operators are operators that you set in a parent component. And you can drag this onto here, call this audio analysis. And then when selecting or like referencing to this operator, we can simply type the expression IOP.audioanalysis. And there we have it. It's just a quicker way of referencing certain operators. And usually when building bigger networks or some very well-defined functionalities, um, this can be super useful so that you don't have to remember or type out the whole operator path or, or reference. So that is a usual use case for internal operators, but I found this uh, too much work to, to, you know, define these. So instead you can now drag an operator onto this diamond button, hold control alt, and this will then prompt you to name your uh, IOP which I can do just like that. And suddenly this is already filled in there and I can start using it. Something that also comes up when dealing with internal operators is, is simply keeping track of them, um, as well as parent shortcuts and global shortcuts, which I'm gonna talk about soon. But if I hover over here in the navigation bar, you can see that now it tells me that I have a, an IOP. It tells me the name. If I press Alt, it will also give me the relative path so I can add more stuff there. Let's see what could be useful. Maybe let's add the bloom. I could also drag it onto the project so I can hold Ctrl and Alt, drag and drop it. And now I can name my IOP. I will name it the capital. And as you can see now, it shows that there is an IOP that's called bloom and it tells us the relative path when holding Alt also. As you can also see, there is a P Canon project and it tells us the parent shortcut of this uh, component. So the parent shortcuts are again just a shorthand way of referencing to parents. Um, and it's also kind of a more economic way, let's say. Um, so if I wanted to just gonna do something with a parameter chop and you could say operators let's look at the parent the current parent that's fine and we can take a look at the parent of the parent which is the project but as soon as i move this into into another uh, layer now this it doesn't reference this level anymore but the second parent 
So for this reason, parent shortcuts are very useful. I can just say parent.project, and then it will always point at this level, no matter how deep this operator is. So these are useful for parent shortcuts. Just a quick, quick uh, glance. Also, when hovering over this button or clicking it, we get the same information in kind of a notation. It shows me that the base doesn't have any parent shortcuts. In a similar fashion, if this operator had a global shortcut, so let's name this project one with capitals, um, then hovering over this will also tell us that shortcut name uh, next to the G. And global shortcuts, for those who don't know, are a way to reference operators from anywhere in the network. And while we are talking about global API shortcuts, I want to go a little bit ahead of myself and open up one of the UI tools that are part of the toolbar. So if we click on this FX button, we get a few tools that we're going to talk about in the next video. But I want to point out the global out select. And this tool lists all the global OP shortcuts and also the out operators of those components. Um, so this is super useful if you are you know, somewhere else in your, in your network and you are uh, trying to figure out, OK, what was my OP shortcut and what were its outputs? Um, this is something that comes up a lot. Um, you can have an over overview here. You can have a look at um, the operator view, operator viewer. Uh, this is my connect setup, as well as the parameters. Um, I guess more important here. And you can also open up a floating network there. Uh, moreover, you can drag and drop any of the out operators from this list, and it gives you a select or it's selecting through the global OP shortcut. As you can see, now I could selected uh, my Kinect Chop, calibrated Kinect Chop data and calibrated um, Kinect Point Cloud also. Something that I do also often is create extensions for my components. And usually you would have to go into the component editor, drop down these extensions, name your extension, ext something, and then click on add. Instead, I have a shortcut now with Shift, Alt, and click on this button, this Simon button, and it will uh, pop up this window, ext something, and it added an extension here. As you can see, we can write our Python code here, and it also added this uh, parameter execute that lets us already deal with the parent custom components. So let's open up. And we can see that we have the amp and the period. And let's say I just want to print this amp self. And then we have to add the parameter, the value, and the previous r well pref. And I can print whatever. So now I already have a callback for any of my custom parameters by just naming them correctly in the extension code. Another nice new feature I added is uh, switching between the two last selected operators with a shortcut on the, on the keyboard. So it's control and tab, similar to how it is in browsers, switching between tabs. So, you know, in case you are, you know, noodling around in some operator and then, you know, switching back and forth between between, uh, between two of them. Uh, you can just do it quickly. Let's say I'm dealing with these two noises and I wanna, you know, just iterate between the two somehow to build something else. I don't know, whatever. Uh, it's just It's just nice to do. The last thing I want to show in this video is quick panes. Um, basically, these allow you to quickly open up um, other panes to browse networks. So let's say that I wanted to quickly peek into this space com that contains my feedback uh, network, but I don't want to, you know, go in, split my pane, go out, and then you know start working in parallel. Um, instead, I can hold. Control Alt and Shift while selecting a custom component and dragging my mouse in a certain direction. And to close this pane, this quick pane, I can then again hold Control Alt and Shift 
and drag my mouse in the same direction. And in this way, I can quickly open a lot of panes. We can also customize how much uh, it splits our, our screen. I've also added the parameter to the tool settings. You can access it by right clicking on this icon, and then it brings up the general settings of the toolkit. And here I can change the ratio of the horizontal and the vertical split. So this way we can quickly dip into other components, make our adjustments, whatever, and then just hop out. That's it for today's episode. Next up, we're going to take a look at all the buttons and the underlying tools in the toolbar. But in the meantime, if you're curious, there's a very fine wiki that I wrote, and you can always Alt and right click to, onto any buttons to open up a browser to the relevant button function. And lastly, I would again mention that this is a free and open source project available on GitHub. But if you would like to support me or look at more of my exclusive stuff on Patreon, you're always welcome to join there and all the support is welcome.